Hi year five, I hope you're well. First of all, I'd just like to say how brilliant your adventure stories were. The other year five teachers and I thoroughly enjoyed reading them and we were blown away with the amount of features you'd include in your writing, so well done. For today's lesson, you're going to need a pencil or pen and some paper or your notebooks if you still have them. I'll let you go and just get that and I'll wait here a second. Okay, have you got them? Let's start. In a moment, I'm going to show you a paragraph of text taken from the book, The Great K-Pop Tree. I need to be able to tell somebody exactly what it's about without making them read all of it. That means I've got to do something called praising. That means to summarise year five, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. I've managed to praise this paragraph into six bullet points. One of my bullet points is the weather in the Amazon rainforest supports plant growth. I've sent this challenge to the year five teachers to see just how many bullet points they can pray see this paragraph into. Shall we see how they got on? Okay. How did you do, Mr. Philpotts? Thanks for the challenge, Ms. Taylorson. I've managed to pray see the information from the Great Cape Pock Tree into four bullet points. I did this by just selecting what I felt was the key information. Thanks, Mr. Philpotts. Oh, he did it in fewer bullet points than me, year five. Shall we see how Miss Warren got on? Well, I've had a go and I've preceded it in five bullet points. Great work, Miss Warren. And Miss Evans, how many bullet points have you preceded this into? Hi, Miss Taylorson. I managed to preceed my paragraph into three short, snappy and concise bullet points. Oh, that's really good advice. Thank you, Miss Evans. OK, year five, it's your turn now. Can you have a go at this challenge too? I'll show you the text on the screen, like I said before, in a moment. And how many bullet points can you pray see it into? Pause the video now and have a go at summarising it. Remember to think about what information is important and to keep your points short and snappy. I'll see you back here afterwards. Welcome back. How'd you get on? Here are our pray sees. Mr Philpotts, Miss Warren, Miss Evans and I all did it in different amounts. But we've included similar points. I've read through them and we all included that the rainforest was hot and the crops grew well. We've all included about the top layer and the bottom layer being called the canopy and the understory. And we've included about the animals that might live there. But the reason we've done it in different amounts is because of how we've written our bullet points. And also because we've considered information that's important to us. And that might change depending upon the individual. I would have said for this paragraph that you should have done it in about four to five bullet points. And the reason for that is we want to keep the amount shorter than the original passage. So well done if you did it in that. So our learning object today is to pricey a paragraph. Hmm. So what is praiseing? Well, pricey is a French word and it basically means that we are creating a summary about a longer passage of text, but we're using bullet points or sentences that contain less words. It needs to be precise and clear. When praising, you should use some of the key words that you find in the text and put them into your own version. It's a bit like when we read a book at school uh, during Book Bubble, and then we tell the person next to us what that book was about. We'd summarise it and give them a, a brief overview about what it is. We do this and we want to know what a longer passage of text says quickly. So praising will allow the reader to understand what all, it's, all the text says, but they haven't got to read lots, so they need to read a few sentences or bullet points. I think that this skill is going to come in really handy for today's lesson. I've been thinking about what job I would do if I was a Mayan, but I found so much information about the different things that I did, that all I want to know is what I'd do for a job. I don't want to read through all of this. Sorry about that, Year 5. Reading is really important, but... I need to know exactly what I want to do and I'm in a bit of a hurry. Mr Philpotts has asked exactly what job I'd like to do if I was a mine and I don't want to, I haven't got time to read everything. Oh, did you hear that? Let's have a look. Oh, it seems. Sorry if I've got an email from Miss Evans. I asked her for some help earlier and she sent me this praise that she's done. It gives me a summary of a job. If I show you on the screen, can you help me figure out what job it is from, from the summary? OK, thank you. Pause the video in a second and see if you can work it out. Welcome back. Did you work out what job it was? That's right, it's a farmer. I got the same answer too. 
I think it's a farmer because of this bullet point. This one says, Maya men ploughed the fields and carried the crops. Now that ploughing fields is a job that farmers do, isn't it? I can't believe they're year five. They didn't have any animals or anything to help them when they were ploughing the fields. They had to do it all by hand. Nowadays, obviously, farmers use machinery to help with this. But I imagine as a Mayan, it, this job would have been something that was so much hard work. Obviously, it would have been worth the hard work because they could eat the food and things they produced, couldn't they? But I bet it was tough in a sweltering heat. OK, I'm going to pass you over to Miss Evans now and she's going to go through exactly what a pricey is again. Recap that. And she's also going to set you your task for today. Hi, F5. I hope you're well. So before we get started, I want you to tell me what is a pricey. Now, you've been doing it with Miss Taylor since, so hopefully you'll be experts at it at this point. So a pricey is when we summarise a large piece of information. So if we look at the definition on the board, it says pricey is a French word used to describe a piece of writing which summarises the main ideas. Now, a lot of the time you will be reading information and not all of it is essential to the main point. So that's what we're going to look at now. But why? Why do you need to pray see something? What is the big picture here? Now, the reason that we do it is to make our writing short, snappy and concise. It's so we can pull the main bits of information that we need and get rid of any information that is not essential. So it makes your writing more snappy. OK, here I have my little friend here, which I'm sure you will enjoy. He, his job is to spot key words. Now to add a little bit more context to it, key words help, just like a key, unlock a door. So think of how a key unlocks a door um, and might find a mystery inside. You need to find the key words to unlock the main message of a paragraph. Okay, so I've had a look at this waggle. Miss Taylorson's had a go at looking at um, a pricey for lots of information about a farmer in Mayan times. So, as you can see, I have the first bullet point that we have is working during growing season. Then it says Maya men ploughed the fields and carried the crops. Then it says men and boys tended to milk the fields where maize and corn, beans and squash grew together. The fourth one is tools made from obsidian and flint required sharp edges. And the final bullet point says, you need to be strong, reliable and hardworking. So, before we get started with our own pricey, we need to create steps for success. We're going to create those steps for success based on that waggle pricey on the board. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I notice is how many bullet points are there? Now, I would say as a general rule of thumb, no more than five snappy bullet points. And when I say snappy, I mean short. So I'm going to put no more than five bullet points. That's my first step to success. Now, year five, if you'd like to start writing your own steps to success then feel free if you want to just follow with me then you can do that also okay so no more than five bullet points but how did we get to this pricey so we know no more than five bullet points but we had to unlock the key information and to do that we had to underline it so underline the key information. That's our second step to success. Now, this step to success isn't necessarily in order. Obviously, the first thing that we would do is underline the key information in a paragraph. Then we would write it into bullet points, no more than five bullet points. Now, is there anything else that you notice? Perhaps about the final bullet point. The final bullet point says you need to be strong, reliable and hard working. So that is inferring, we're using inference, so one of our reading skills, we're inferring what type of person, what type of qualities you might need to be successful at this job. 
okay? So out of your five bullet points, it'd be great if you could do it in four, but your final bullet point needs to be about the types of qualities that a person would need. So I'm going to just simply put here final point, and then I'm going to put an arrow, equals qualities needed. Let's read it back. Steps to success for proceed. The first thing that we would need to do is underline the key information. Forget about all the unnecessary information. We're focusing on the key information. Then we would put that into no more than about five, uh, five bullet points. Then remember that your final bullet point needs to be about the types of qualities that that person would have. So I know straight away, without even reading a big paragraph about a farmer, that to be a farmer, you need to be strong, reliable and hardworking. So now we've got our steps of success in our head, let's have a go. So here's my little friend again, searching for keywords. Now he's helped me earlier because this is my turn. He's helped me identify key words. So if I zoom in, hopefully you can see it. Okay, so I've identified key words or key phrases that I think actually they're really important. So you can pause the video now and read the whole paragraph. That is absolutely fine. I'm going to read out the key points that I have underlined. So first of all, we're looking at the job of a Mayan priest. Now, it says he had a wide range of responsibilities. I thought that was really important. If you've got a wide range of responsibilities, it means that your job involves more than just one thing. So you have, the job comes with a lot of power and influence. So think about the type of person that would be needed for that job. They work very closely with the royalty and the nobility. The job of the priest involves conducting religious rituals, overlooking religious ceremonies, and ensuring that religion ruled over all aspects of Mayan society. Final bits here that I've underlined. Developing sciences such as astronomy, mathematics, medicine and the writing language. And finally, it said it involved teaching, teaching to children. So think about what qualities that they would need if one of their jobs was to teach to children. OK, so I've done my first step to success. I've underlined the key information. Hopefully that unlocks the key message of the paragraph. So let's have a go now at creating our own pricey based on that information that I have underlined. Okay. So I'm gonna zoom out so you can see. This box here is my pricey. I'm going to have a go. That piece of paragraph that you just paused, I'm going to have a go at praising it. Okay, so bear with me a second. Okay, so they had a wide range of responsibilities, but also they had a lot of power. So my first one is, Priests had power. I know that because I've underlined it. It's my key information. So priests had power, which was similar to royalty. That's quite a big thing, isn't it? So I'm going to put comma, similarly, to royalty. my first bullet point okay second bullet point the jobs included so I'm going down so it says job of priest these are what the jobs included so I'm going to go over to this side so jobs included now I'm going to give a list I'm just introducing a list and put a colon oh I didn't need that jobs included so what do they include religious rituals slash ceremonies so I'm going to put a new bullet point now my third bullet point what else did they do so I've talked about uh, religious rituals and ceremonies but have a look here I underlined 
ensure that religion rules over all aspects. So the next one will be ensure, or insured, because that's what they would do. Insured religion ruled. Now, that's a snappy, short, concise um, summary of that particular sentence. So ensure religion ruled. We're in that other room again. So I'm on my fourth bullet point now. So, year five, I have looked at, so far, priests had power, similarly to royalty. Jobs included religious rituals slash ceremonies, and I've also said ensured religion ruled. So up to this point, I have included all my key information. I just need to remember to include this last piece of key information into a bullet point. So they developed, as you can see here, they developed sciences. Such as, now I don't need to list them all. I could just list a few. So I can see medicine. My pen keeps breaking. So medicine. Oh, and it's gone. Such as medicine and written language. So, so far I've got four bullet points. The first one is, priests had power similarly to royalty. Second one, jobs included religious rituals slash ceremonies. Third one, ensured religion ruled. Fourth one, developed sciences such as medicine and written language. Now, you will notice I'm running out of room here. So, I'm just going to rub out what I've written so far. So, if you need to quickly write these down, then you can. But remember, this is my turn, so don't worry too much. So I'm just going to quickly rub them out and then I will write my last one. Okay. So my final one. Oh dear. My final one would be, well, what type of person do you need to be to be a priest? You know, you've got lots of power, you've got lots of responsibility, you'll be teaching children, you'll be holding ceremonies. So I'm going to put, you would need to be, you would need to be, what would you need to be? What do you think, F5? You would need to be, I'm going to say, hmm, responsible, because I think that's definitely a trait that you'd need to have. Responsible. Reliable, that's for sure. And so you would need to be responsible, reliable, and organized. Okay, I'm going to stop there. So you will have seen my five bullet points in total. This is obviously the last one. So this is my fifth bullet point. And it says what qualities you would need to um, be successful in a job of a Mayan priest. So well done, Year 5, if you've really understood this. If not, I would like you to go back through the video and watch it again, and then come back to this stage and have a go at it yourself. So let's have a look at what's next. Here, I have a piece of text. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in on the paragraph, and you can pause it if you want to. So I will explain the chilies and then I will zoom in on the paragraph, okay? So, chili one, I would like you to pray see this piece of text. Now this particular paragraph about a Mayan job is a merchant, okay? So, if you've chosen chili one, I would like you to pray see that piece of information. Underline the keywords, no more than five bullet points, short snappy bullet points, and the final bullet point must contain qualities that a person has to have to be successful in that job. So remember, this is taking notes on the important pieces of information about this job. If you're Chile 2, I would like you to infer what qualities a person must have to do well at this job. So perhaps you could write an additional little sentence about why they would need to be strong or why they would need to be reliable. And finally, Chile 3, imagine that this is your job. How do you feel about this job? 
Is it one you'd like? Why and why not? I would like to justify you to justify your answers with evidence in the text. Okay, so hopefully you've decided on what chili you're going to choose. Now I'm going to zoom in on the paragraph that I would like you to pray see. Okay, so I'm going to let you pause that there. And remember, the teachers in year five would love to see you sending in your pricey, whether it's whether you've done chili one, chili two, or chili three. We'd love to see you having a go at it. Good luck, year five.